Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the concerns many soybean farmers have is soybean white mold, but there are many things you can do to manage white mold so it isn't a problem on your farm. We'll talk about those today. Well, we're early in the season here, but we are starting to see some herbicide carryover symptoms from some products that were used last year. So we want to talk about how you can avoid those issues going into the next season. Well, as always, we'll be after a weed of the week later on in the show, attacking this weed, stopping it from being a problem on your farm. But first, here's today's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. our farm basics time today we're going to talk about killing stuff well, killing I, bugs I, okay <laughs> first of all bugs aren't always bad there are certain no. uses for bugs and there's good places for them yep. around your house is not one of them unless you like to collect insects like my oldest son does but let's just say that you see spiders around the outside of your house like right now i see some spiders in the crop residue that we're standing on right now what that tells me is there's a food source for them there's other bugs that they're feeding on what are they feeding on maybe they're feeding on flies maybe they're feeding on ants who knows what the bugs are but you've got some bugs around your house. I don't like that. I want to enjoy my house. I don't have to worry about things. Well, so, let's also what talk, do you do? Yeah, let's also talk about inside the house. And it goes back to when Darren and I were kids and we were doing chores every morning and every night, hog chores. We were out in the hog barns. And one of the big things our dad told us is, hey, every week you got to be sweeping down the ceilings. Literally, we would sweep down the ceilings to make sure there are no cobwebs because he'd talk about disease and you know just problems you're going to have that, hey, our barns have to look great. And we want to try to prevent any disease. So we would also spray insecticide and it's the same thing in your house. So if you want to control spiders, ants, crickets, grasshoppers, ticks, mosquitoes, just a whole bunch of bugs around your house, in your house, in your lawn, that's what we're talking about today. Well, I think it's interesting, Brian, because I do talk to people all the time that say, well, oh, I don't know if I really want to spray anything around. I've got pets and I've got kids and I'm concerned yep. about this. And I say, well, does your pet have a flea or tick collar? Oh yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't go without that. Like, well, guess what you would be spraying around your house? The same thing that's in the flea and tick collar. If it's safe enough to put on the neck of an animal <laughs> that you're going to be holding, petting, your kids are going to yeah. be rubbing, and guess what? It's safe enough to spray on the siding of your house, in your landscaping rock, even yeah. out in the grass to control bugs so the bugs don't get on you, number one. And number two, you don't have to rub and play around in this stuff. What I do is I'll spray a product like Tempo, for example, it's a liquid. I'll spray it right with my weed control around in my grass, or I'll spray it around my bushes and on the siding in the house, that kind of stuff, or even right inside the doors and inside the basement, that kind of thing in the house where I would normally see some insects. It does a nice job. As soon as it dries on, it's safe for the pets to be around, safe for the kids to be around. Uh, it, it literally takes just a few minutes most of the time in the summer for that to dry. And everybody can go back to playing. The reason why this tempo is labeled in homes, schools, hospitals, restaurants, around your house, in your lawn, around your animals, around you, is because it's made from the chrysanthemum flower, okay? It's like sprinkling a flower all around your house, inside your house. Yes, I realize some people are allergic to flowers, and you might be one of those people. So it's very possible that if you were spraying it yourself, and you spilled some on your arm that you might get a rash, okay? But it's never gonna kill anybody. And if you have this worry, then have somebody else spray it for you. It's not that big a deal. Once that product is dried on, then there's very, very little risk at all. So this is a tremendously safe product for humans, for livestock, for the environment, for your pets. And that's the reason why it's so widely used around the world. And the other great thing is, it is very effective on these bugs. So around my house, for example, we'll spray at least once a month. It does work great, and we've been using it for many, many years. Right, there's one other product that you may consider using around your house, and certainly there's other choices too. Uh, but these are the ones that Brian and I use. And it, they're pretty safe. Yeah, the other one that we use is, is something called imidacloprid. That is one that uh, can be spread on your lawn. You can just run it through a dry lawn spreader, spread it out there, and then you have to water it in. It's gonna take a pretty good yep. shot of moisture to get it down in. What imidacloprid will do is it'll attack some of the bugs out in your lawn, like grubs. If you've got some grubs in your area, this is a good product for it. It'll also help hold down mosquitoes and, and other insects that are out in the lawn. So there's a number of good things. Now, with imidacloprid and with Tempo, 
we are concerned about bee safety. So if you have plants that have bees on them, for example, you've got flowering plants, you've got something in your garden, whatnot, that needs bees, you have to be very cautious. With Tempo, we would suggest using it in hours that the bees are not out. If you have a hive near you, we would suggest covering that hive on the day that you're gonna be spraying Tempo so the bees think that it's night and don't wanna come out for a day or so. That would be a good move. With Imidacloprid, that is in the neonicotinoid family. That's a family that's gotten a lot of attention about bee safety. You can safely use neonics. Uh, but like Brian was saying, we want to water it in right away. Spread it out, then turn your lawn sprinklers on and let them run for a while. And let them wash all that product down in the ground so you don't take any chances that bees are going to pick it up and bring it back to the hive. I know that using a pesticide or what's called a pesticide around your house does sound scary. But when I tell you that what we're using here is from a flower and that imidacloprid is tremendously safe, it's actually from the nicotine family. And while nicotine may be harmful to smoke for 20 years, it's not too harmful when you immediately water it into your lawn and then it's basically gone down into the soil. So with those two things, they are tremendously safe. It's not like the old pesticides we had 30, 40, 50 years ago. These are very safe and we do have homeowners all around the world using these very effectively today. Well, these products will control bugs, but they won't control our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leaders and Teleslope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with Soil Max. Visit SoilMax.com. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Stop coring your bins with the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader. Traditional bin filling systems create uneven concentrations of grain and fine particulates. Uniform grain distribution allows even airflow throughout the entire bin, giving you more control over temperature and moisture content, increasing your grain quality and bottom line. Call us today for more information. Dry load store, one 855 agri Wake up. Breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. A veil makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can be more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a veil. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. Sclerotinia white mold is a problem in soybeans in many areas. And, and it can other also, crops. And, and, yeah, and it can also be an issue in sunflowers, and dry beans, several other crops. So today we want to talk about the best control methods for your farm. All right, first of all, if I have a white mold problem, I know I've got a white mold problem historically in a field. There are going to be sclerotia, or basically the little seeds for the next generation of white mold laying out in your field. So the big thing then the best management practice you can take is trying to control them right away. Now some farmers would say well I'm going to do tillage. I'm going to try to bury them so I don't have to deal with them and, and that is an option. You certainly can do that. You can use a product like Contans. What Contans does is it's a biological product that will actually feed on the sclerotia. So it's a natural product that you're putting back out into the soil that's going to be the natural predator for those sclerotia. That's its food source. So if you do that right after 
year you have a white mold issue. Like let's just say this year you had a problem in your soybeans or in your sunflowers. Well, as soon as harvest is done, I'd get the contans out there and let it start working on that right away. Do no tillage, leave the sclerotia in place, let the product work. If you get it out in the fall, you've got that much more time before the next crop will be in the ground. Now let's say you're gonna go to corn the next year and then soybeans two years away. That's fine. Eat those sclerotia up. If you can clean up most of the seed, by the time you plant your susceptible crop like soybeans a couple years from now, you won't have much of a problem. We used to have some white mold problems on our farm. Here's another option for you. Plant corn for a few years. We took some fields and we planted corn two years in a row and just that two years out of soybeans, by the time we went back to soybeans, we didn't have nearly as much problem. Now obviously weather plays a huge factor in this. If you don't have the right weather conditions, you're not going to have a big white mold problem. What happens is you're going to see the germination, we'll call it, of the sclerotia and it will be mushrooms. So if you see mushrooms out in your field, understand that, hey, those could be white mold mushrooms and they're going to literally shoot spores out at your plants and your plants are most susceptible right after flowering. Like with soybeans, flowering begins in late June. So in early July, that's where this infection can start getting into the plant the easiest. All right, at that point, you know that you're gonna have an opening in the plant when you've got flowers that bloom and then dry up. And that's where we've got, like Brian was saying, the white mold's chance to come in. So when you think about that, white mold is a fungus. That means we can use a fungicide to try to prevent yep. that problem. So we wanna be out there right at R1 when we're seeing first bloom, that's your shot get out there ahead of white mold and say, okay, I know it's coming, so I'm gonna prepare. I'm gonna spray something ahead of time. Maybe it's Domark. Well, let's talk about those products. Okay, the best product is Endura. The next as a step down is Proline. And the next as a step down at the bottom is Domark. Okay, now I'm not oh. saying Domark is bad, but Domark is dramatically less expensive than Endura. So almost no soybean farmer I know is gonna spend the four or five times more money to go out there with Endura. But if you had a crop like sunflowers or or dry beans where you got a lot of money on the line here, then I get it. Use Endura. Use a good product that is labeled. But in our case, what we usually do before we even use a fungicide, if we were worried about white mold, we might spray Cobra right before flowering. That kind of thins out all the leaves and then we move more air through and we get almost as good a control as you will with Domark. All right, so we talked about a few products that actually work on white mold control. There are a lot of products that really don't. Uh, so we think about right. the most popular fungicide used across the country is Headline or many different combinations that it's in. Preaxor would be one, for example. We think about Stratego Yield, Quilt, you know, real popular, really good fungicides. White mold just happens to be one of those diseases they don't really do much for. Right. So there are other choices if you've got white mold. So if you have no white mold issue, fine, use those products. But if white mold's a concern, you know, how much are we stepping back on some of the uh, other disease control and things by going to a Domark? You're hardly stepping back at all. You're going to maybe give up a little bit of the plant health side, but Domark is really good on the other diseases. Okay, just a couple more comments. There is no genetic resistance in soybeans. So if you're thinking, well, I'll just get a white mold resistant bean, there aren't any that are resistant. Now, there are some that are more tolerant than others. You can certainly talk to your seed provider about, hey, which of these varieties that I'm going to plant would be the best on white mold? If they're big, bushy beans, eh, chances are they probably aren't your best ones for white mold tolerance. Now, the other thing is row spacing is going to really come into play and plant population. For weed control, we like narrower rows, higher populations. For white mold control, we like wider rows, lower populations. So you have to weigh those two things out. If you're having issues with weeds in a field, you may be forced to narrow things up and plant a little thicker bean population. But if white mold's a concern, uh, you better use all the management practices you can to try and stop it. Well, unfortunately, those management practices aren't gonna do much for controlling our Weed of the Week, but we'll tell you what will coming up later in the show. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Could I boost my potential by foliar feeding? You can. Foliar feeding can correct nutrient deficiencies and sustain your crop through stress. It's a great way to deliver nutrients that your crop lacks to reach its full potential. Research proves it. 
Applied alone or in combination with your crop protection program, AgroLiquid products assure that when the season presents opportunity, you can boost your crop's yield potential by foliar feeding. For more info, visit agroliquid.com. Some prefer to invest in fields halfway around the world in short-term solutions to long-term challenges. At POET, we're investing in the fields we have right here at home, cultivating communities and growing the local economy, creating new local jobs while we create worldwide energy solutions, helping family farms grow even as they fuel the world, because we know that investing in a community can pay global dividends. See the world differently with POET. Working in agriculture over the past three decades, I saw a need for an accurate way to apply dry product to seed. That's where our Changing Times applicators come in. The CT applicator brush sifts powder into small particles resulting in proper distribution. Quantities can be adjusted by the speed of the brush rotation. This allows for even and accurate distribution of product. Application at the time of planting can be used with any seed delivery system and saves farmers time, labor, and money. Remember, CT applicators for the Changing Times. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Every year we do see herbicide carryover around the country. So today we wanna to talk about some of the biggest reasons why we see that and what you can do to reduce the chances of carryover on your farm. Okay, let's take the first way that we see herbicide carryover and that's poor product selection. So we've got a product that maybe we should have thought differently about that. You know what, I am gonna have sunflowers in the field next year. This could be an issue for me. Where we run into this a lot of times is where somebody uses a pre-emerge product that contains their favorite product, and then they use it again post. One of the things when both Darren and I were first becoming agronomists, our dad said to us, and our dad's a lifelong farmer and agronomist also, he said, boys, here's the thing. If you're gonna make a recommendation to somebody and you miss a few weeds, it's not the end of the world. But I'll tell you what, if you make a recommendation and it leads to a carryover problem, now you got trouble. So always be conservative on that side of things, and you'll see that with our recommendations. For Flexstar, for example, we don't recommend over 12 ounces to be used anywhere. Pre, post, I don't care what area of the country you're in, we're very concerned about it. So it just depends on your situation and what you're dealing with because obviously the further north you are, the colder you are, and the further west you are typically, the drier you are. So if you're cold and dry, well guess what? You're not going to break down that herbicide very well. But let's also talk about a couple other factors in breaking herbicide down because think about what does break herbicide down. Obviously, if I got a zillion weeds out there, chances are those weeds are gonna use up my herbicide. So that's a good thing. I mean, not that you have all those weeds, but that the herbicide gets used up. But the other big way that a lot of these herbicides get broken down is by bacteria in the soil. So when do bacteria not live well in the soil? Well, when you have flooding, when you have drought, when you have super high or super low soil pH. I mean, you start looking at your soil factors and if your soil is alive, chances are it's gonna break down herbicide a lot faster than if your soil is dead. Well, it comes down to knowing your soil. I think grid soil sampling is very important, at least setting up zones that you're sampling out in your field so you can kind of understand where these variations are. So you can try to avoid some of these issues or at least minimize them. The other one, Brian, that you didn't mention there is high salt levels from right. manure applications. Yep. Yep. We see this with guys that spread or high levels drainage. of manure. Uh, yeah, or poor drainage could lead to high salt levels as well. Uh, if you're somebody that's in one of these situations, you've just got to be real about things. Hey, you know what? I'm doing this. There's some good things with it, but there's also some bad things. And if you've got high levels of salt, all those little microbes in your soil can't work very well either. So we just have to be smart. There's so many choices out there, and that's the number one thing I wanted to say today. You're not locked into what you had to use 10 years ago. We've got so many options today. Use a cut rate of this, a cut rate of that, a no residual product here, a no residual product product there, pretty soon you got a great solution, less money, and no carryover or very little carryover risk. All right, there's certainly a lot of things to think about when you're choosing the right product so you don't have carryover, but you got to kill the weeds too. We'll show you how to stop this week's weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land. 
it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is common ragweed, and unfortunately, it's Roundup-resistant common ragweed. Well, it's getting to be tougher to control because Roundup doesn't get it, but guess what? Liberty still does a nice job on common yep. ragweed when it's relatively small, so you do have a non-selective option that you can use. However, there aren't a whole lot of conventional options. We'll get into what those well, products are. All right, let's talk in the easy crops. So corn, this is a piece of cake. You use Verdict Down. You could even use Triple Flex, Sure Start, Balance Flex, something like that pre. Post-emerge, we like status the best, although Diflex is really good, Clarity is really good with a little atrazine, even Buctral atrazine isn't that bad. You've avoided uh, the HPPDs they, though. I they, think the HPPDs do a pretty nice job right. and you can spray them a little bit later in the season. So if you get a late flush, you can still go with the Callisto or Lotus Impact. Especially Armazon. when you throw just a little bit of atrazine, even a quarter pound of atrazine in there, it really kicks that control up. All right. Okay, how about wheat? Well, in wheat, we start out with Sharpen Down. That's going to give you some residual control. You can use a good strong rate of Sharpen Down ahead of wheat. I like that. Then post emerge Husky is my favorite choice. You've got Buctrel plus an HPPD in there. That seems to do the best job. Okay, now we get to the tough ones, soybeans. Our suggestion is start with the three pre strategy. And I realize that the yellows aren't very good on ragweed. They might have a little bit of control, but you have authority or valor out there plus Metribuzin out there along with the yellow. And all of a sudden, you've got really good control pre. And then post-emerge, we would like you to follow up with first rate if it's non-ALS resistant common ragweed. Unfortunately, some of the ragweeds resistant to Roundup and the ALS chemistry. So then what are we gonna use? Well, my first mix is first rate Flexstar. I like that mix. That way, you know, generally not all the ragweed is ALS resistant <laughs> and Roundup resistant. It could be, yep. but but if you've got some that's starting to get that way, now you've got the Flexstar in there to punch it out and take the rest. Now, some farmers will say, wait a minute, I want a one, two, like my first app, I do Flexstar with something like Cadet. That's fine if you get out there early, you can do an okay job and then save that Flexstar for the next shot. But keep in mind, Flexstar's got a 10 month rotational you restriction. First rate in Cadet and then follow with Flexstar later. Correct, yeah. correct. Yep. You have to be careful with that Flexstar. You can't use it too late in the season or you'll have some issues to next year's corn. Well, once again, common ragweed may be ALS resistant. It may be Roundup resistant, but we still have plenty of good options that will control it in almost every crop. That's it for our weed, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect only from Case IH. the right equipment is critical to achieve the best performance from your fungicide applications. In today's Iron Talk, I'll show you how a small change can make a big difference for you. With fungicides, you have to understand how they work in order to set up your sprayer to optimize performance. There are two transport systems in the plant called the xylem and the phloem. The xylem can only move things up in the plant. The phloem moves things like nutrients and water both up and down in the plant. Fungicides, once they're inside the plant, only move in the xylem. One other important consideration is that fungicides can only protect the leaves and plant parts that are out at time of application. With this in mind, there are some little changes you need to make on your sprayer compared to spraying Roundup. First of all, with fungicides, you should use more spray volume with ground rigs performing mid-season applications. Your crop is up and has some size to it. Now you need the volume to cover the plants. Secondly, you need the correct spray tips to make small droplets to get the best coverage. Flat fans work well, and some farmers even prefer twin fans. Finally, your spray pressure should be fairly high to get good penetration down through the crop canopy and to coat the plants. Spraying a fungicide is a lot different than spraying straight Roundup. We're not nearly as worried about drift, but we do need excellent coverage to get the job done. So use flat fan tips or twin fan tips with more water volume and a higher spray pressure to protect your crop. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show.
For lower cost, higher production, Mandeco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandeco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandeco Agri dealer. Visit NorthCountryMarketing.biz or call. How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Corn Head from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. I wish I could side dress more than just nitrogen. You can. While side dressing is efficient for nitrogen applications, you can also use that opportunity to apply PK and the micronutrients your crop needs. AgroLiquids Calibrate and MicroLink products allow you to nutritionally balance your side dress application efficiently and economically. Let Agriculture Liquid Fertilizer help you make your next crop a bumper crop. For more info, visit agroliquid.com. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioAg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. Working in agriculture over the past three decades, I saw a need for an accurate way to apply dry product to seed. That's where our Changing Times applicators come in. The CT applicator brush sifts powder into small particles resulting in proper distribution. Quantities can be adjusted by the speed of the brush rotation. This allows for even and accurate distribution of product. Application at the time of planting can be used with any seed delivery system and saves farmers time, labor, and money. Remember, CT applicators for the Changing Times. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but for more agronomic information, we invite you to tune in to Sirius XM Channel 80 for the Ag PhD radio show that's each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. It takes good management practices and care to accomplish this. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.